welcome to the Gussets and Godos podcast, episode number 17. My name is Christina and this is my podcast about all of my knitting, stitching and crafting endeavours. Uh, so this is the first podcast of 2019. Uh, we're already getting close to the end of January, so I've got lots of knitting that I've been doing and I would like to share with you. Um, I'm just going to jump right in and show you my finished project, which is the White Horse Pullover by Caitlin Hunter. And I knit this in the Laxton's Limited BFL Masham, Masham, still can't pronounce it, but there we go, um, blend. I knit it in their four ply, which is the fingering weight yarn, and I knit it to help double. It does call for a DK. Um, so I adjusted my gauge as necessary, um, and it is lovely. I'm so pleased with it. It is cropped. I added a little bit of waist shaping, although it is still quite loose along the side seams and then also along the middle of each side of the back, just because it was quite large as it's meant to be. Uh, the lace yoke is so beautiful. You've got all these little bobblies and it is stunning. I went with the sleeves as they're meant to be. So they're meant to be a three quarter length, which they are. Um, and then really very nice. But my only thing I would say is just as I've been wearing it, so I'm trying to <laughs> get it in the picture, it just, it stretched out just the tiniest little bit. So I'm going to wear it a little bit more and see how that kind of affects me wearing it. Um, but it is in that kind of slightly awkward length. So it's like wave my arm <laughs> around. Um, where your elbow does, you know, chew it up a little bit in the crook. So I'm wondering if I did maybe two inches of stockinette and then the cuff just gave it maybe kind of two inches extra length but I don't know if that's worth doing it's got lovely high neckline and it's not pulling it out which sometimes when I've knit things a little bit too tight I end up having it pulled quite tightly across here so it ends up stretching the neckline out but on this it's really quite perfect I couldn't have asked for a better fit and I'm super happy with it um yeah knit it knit it the to the pattern I just knitted a larger size with smaller needles which would mean that I got my gauge so yeah starting the year off with a bang I think and I finished this gosh not long into um into the year as soon as I cast this off um, I had to cast off on my Christmas present yarn. So I got some, get my numbers. Hmm. Oh gosh. Uh, DK in there. There we go, that's colourway. KVN04. Which is lovely. I th actually, I've just realised my camera lens is usually that side and it's that side. That was a mistake. Never mind. Uh, so this is a beautiful dark grey and I got this especially to knit the Together Shawl by Pia Camerborn of the Camerbornia podcast because I just thought it would go with loads of different things and it was me attempting to be sensible with my knitting. So I have cast on and cast off <laughs> already this beautiful shawl. It is a triangular shaped shawl with a um, an eyelet. Can't you see it? Um, spine and with a popcorn. So beautiful, so so beautiful. I got four of these 
and I've used two totally. One, I still have a good size amount, well, still some, and I didn't start this one. There were two reasons for that. So I wanted a huge shawl. And when this was on the needles, I really did think it was a huge shawl. It's not. It's a very manageable size shawl. Um, and I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough yarn for the bind off, which is a an, an eye cord, a I, an eye cord, yeah. Which is very difficult to show, but there we go. It's very pretty. Never done one of those before. So, um, I probably did bind off a little bit too soon, but in order for me to bind off in the correct place in the pattern, I would have had to knit a certain amount of rows extra, and I didn't think this was enough to go forwards and backwards on this length of shawl by however many times it was, four, eight, four. Anyway, the second reason was I really wanted to knit a matching hat, uh, well, a hat in general, <laughs> um, which is on my Make 9. I did a Make 9 this year, I've not done that before. Um, which, because usually I get very excited about patterns in the beginning of the year, knitting or sewing, and then I don't necessarily make them by the end of the year. So instead of doing one knitting and one sewing, I've combined them both, just a couple of knitting, a couple of sewing patterns, um, which I think will be able to do kind of first half of the year. And then I still have that flexibility um, to make the things I want later on. So I thought that if I kept this aside, that I could then knit, I think it's called the Simple Berry. Uh, it was mentioned on the podcast, Eldenwood Craft podcast, and on the Instagram page as well. She mentioned that she was knitting it and she has now knit it. It's beautiful. And you can knit this beret in many different weights of yarn. Um, so I thought that would be nice. Nice. I mean, to be honest, grey isn't really my colour. But because I like making things that are other colours, I can't be making accessories for each and every single outfit, so <laughs> I'm going to make a berry out of that. I will write the details below. Um, anything I mention, I do write it below, uh, what it is and uh, any of the details. So I, and that called for one skein of the DK. So hopefully, <laughs> matching accessories, love it. Oh, I also, um, the way that I've seen most people wear shawls is where you take the triangle and kind of bunch it up and then wrap it. That's not quite long enough to kind of get a good kind of knot of the ends once they've crossed it. But um, And now I've made it, I don't know if I actually would have wanted it to be that much longer, to be honest. So I would tend to wear it, I think over my shoulders, kind of slightly folded under, just hanging down, which I think is super cute. And then if it was really cold, I would probably just floof it up around my neck and just tuck it old lady style, called midwife style, <laughs> into my coat. Um, so it is very manageable and then all the bulk is here and it's not too much it's just cozy uh, also i have been wearing it the way you're meant to wear a shawl if you live on the little house on the prairie which if anyone does i'm willing to come and live with you too because that is cool um just on the shoulders i must say even after blocking i didn't get the best point um it's quite a soft point, that's that's fine. I was expecting it to be a little bit pointier. You know, I got a quite a good point on the um on the ends, but not so much in the middle. And I suspect that I did my eye cord bind off like a smidgen too tight, I would I would guess. 
because on some of the projects I've seen it's really quite pointy anyway enough talking about pointiness it was super fun pattern to knit the um, bubbles did not need to be knit back and forth back and forth where you have to turn the project which I, I find can be um, it, it is not it makes it not a very good traveling project because especially if you're on a, on a train I try and kind of keep my elbows to myself when I'm knitting I mean when I started knitting I used to knit kind of like this that was not travel appropriate at all um, so <laughs> anything where you're having to do this kind of turning is I find not a good travel project so because you just go across quite long rows at the end and you're just doing each bubble on the one side making your way across and then you do the, just the one turn I mean I think there was 50 something bubbles on my last row so turning 57 times every minute would probably have annoyed the person on the train next to me in fact I think in general I really annoy people on the train doing my knitting. I've got my setup like, perfect now. I always built my train in advance because I take um, a, a long train between London and Shropshire um, every week. Not every day, but once a week I take that train journey. So I've got my backpack on my back. No additional bags. I am ready to go. I'm up those escalators, I'm down those escalators. I get to that train station so, so quickly all my devices, I can sit in my lovely little chair, brilliant, not chair, seat, seat on the train, by the window, with the plug socket, forward facing, love it, love it, my little iPad there with my programs, I've got my knitting in my beautiful project bag, I've got snacks, I've got drinks, anyway, the other day I was knitting, uh, what was I knitting, I was knitting a little cardigan, and I was being very self-contained. I even put the, you know, the little, there's like a little arm that comes down. Usually I don't put that down. But I had put that down to kind of make sure I wasn't taking any of her space. And she was huffing and puffing at me the whole time. It was slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> and she was tapping like quite furiously on her keyboard. I do get myself into some comic situations. At some point she just <laughs> marched down the carriage and found another seat, which I was very happy about because then I just lifted the little thing up and just spread myself out quite nicely. Anyway, this was a very lovely travel size project, all of that to say. And I love it. I've been knitting it. Um, did I knit it in two weeks? Oh, I think I knit it in two weeks. And that I just carried it everywhere and it was just beautiful and being a DK weight instead of a sport weight didn't really affect anything. It's still lovely and drapey and I adore it. Absolutely adore it. In fact, I may like to wear it for the rest of the podcast because it's lovely. Anyway, enough wittering. That's when I know I need to move on. It's when I just start wittering on. And the last knitting project that I've been working on is also out of the same base of yarn. Oh, Nina's scratching at the door. Oh, I'll let her in, but this may be a big mistake. Okay, boo, you can come in if you're on your best behavior. So it is, knit by numbers again in the, whoop, KBN 23 DK and it's a beautiful coral. I picked this colour. Oh, she needed a toilet. I'm sorry, boo. Oh, that could have been a bad problem. If she made a mess outside the door, Dad would have been angry. Anyway, um, this yarn I purchased purely because. All of the Christmas season, I have been using this glorious bag. And this bag is by So Sweet Violet, and it was the Advent, the 12, was it 12 days of Advent? 12 days. It was her Advent calendar. And I was so lucky to get one. 
and to be able to purchase one and I have spent the whole of the winter season just adoring it. Now, I don't know if you can see, there are berries here. Very pale pink and a corally pink and I've spent the whole of the Christmas season staring at this colour. Like, oh, it's so pretty, it's so pretty. So, I picked a yarn that's the same colour because who does not want their cardigan to match their project bag? Obviously. It's like an obvious thing. It's such a lovely colour. And out of it, I have started knitting. When did I start knitting it? I think a week, week and a half ago. I'm knitting the Sandy Cardigan, which is by Amy Appel of the Poison Girls. I'm, I have sped along with this cardigan, really sped along. So it's got a beautiful textured yoke, which has got this crisscross, which are pearl bumps. And the same on the back. And then there is an eyelet, lacy bit, which goes between the top and then the, um, the bottom part, which is beautiful and then the rest is just stuff in it honestly how kitty she picked the most inopportune moment so i've been speeding away quite nicely with this and Hina, must you make such a racket honestly i've done the lovely um ribbing and the another eyelity bit It has been lovely to knit, no problems at all. The yarn has been the perfect pairing, super happy with it. It is looking a little bit darker on the screen, I think, than it is in real life. It is more towards this lighter, sunny one in the sun. But that bleaches it anyway. It's a little fraction lighter. My concern when knitting this project was that this first part here is very narrow. I know it's stuck in it so it rolls, but even so, once it's unrolled, until you get to the underarm, this portion here is very narrow across. And although I may be a little bit more busty than patterns tend to call for, I am no wider in whatever this <laughs> area of the body is called. Um, the above, above bust, like my broadness is, um, broadness, yeah, my broadness is kind of just, is my size, it's, you know, the size that I wear is, is quite true to size, so I had a look at some Ravelry projects and some people had kind of pinned theirs out and theirs looked exactly the same, but then when they'd finished it and it was being worn on the body, it looked perfectly beautiful so just trusting in the pattern just going with it sometimes i think trust the pattern and it is actually quite wide across the back in comparison to the front i would say anyway i thought i would have a peek in my button button box doesn't everyone have an old kind of cookie tin full of but old buttons <laughs> No, just me. Anyway, I thought when I was a kid that that was like treasure to, to look in the button box for a nice button and just they make a very particular noise, which I will not be going and getting the tin because <laughs> it's very noisy. But if you have got a button tin, you will know the gorgeous noise of rifling. It's kind of oh, very lovely. And I managed to find the perfect buttons, although of course there are only two. So typical. So typical, find the perfect buttons in the perfect colour, and then how many do you have? Two. So that was very, very annoying. And I don't even seem to have one here. That's even more annoying. Put one there especially to share. Anyway, as you can see, I was rifling through the box to find any buttons that may potentially go. But Nina, she likes the sound of a button too. Oh. 
I don't let her play with the buttons because I'm worried that she will eat a button. That would be very scary. So it is, this yarn is lovely and squishy and bouncy and I don't get any tickle factor at all, although I am not a sensitive, sensitive I do not have a sensitivity to wool. And I can wear some quite scratchy wool now, but this is more of kind of towards the kind of cotton, I would say. Um, just where there's not, there's no like wiriness, there's, there's no dryness, it just feels so lovely. And I had to say it in that voice just to fully illustrate. Anyway, I have got quite a bit of yarn left, so um, I will do the button band. I'm hesitant to do the, the buttonhole band until I've got the right buttons, just purely because the I would like to make sure that whichever button I choose, there is a good amount of space on either side of the button band, kind of empty space where the button is not, you know, either side of the button. But I don't want to have a teeny tiny button with a huge band, equally. So I think I will maybe cast them on, but not finish them. And I may pass by today and see if there are any buttons, although this is quite a specific colour, so I imagine it's going to be take more effort than I would have liked. Anyway, moving along. Those are my knitting projects for the moment. I have started but not yet finished my Christmas fairy. I have done my friend Irona's one and I put some footage at the end and she absolutely adored it. It um, The outfit of her doll matched her outfit for the Harrods Christmas ball that we went to together and she took some beautiful um, pictures and things. Oh, she's such a lovely person. And she took this lovely photo of her kind of holding the doll and she was blurred. And then the doll was in focus and actually they put it up at work because we were we were putting up some just pictures of the projects we've been working on um, as a team and individually and um, someone thought it might be quite nice just to show everyone's in independent projects because we all have different skill sets and we all work on different things so there's a little picture that she put there of my dolly and anyway so this is the one I've been working on for me they both have the same face, although whenever you try to replicate something, I find it doesn't come out exactly the same. But um, there are no darts, there are no um, pieces on the side, it is just cut flat, it's got the head and the neck, that shape, um, just with some seam allowance. I did embroider the face first, so as you can see. I just used some quilting cotton and I think she's lovely. I used, um, is it DCM, DMC? DMC, I think, DMC. Embroidery floss, except for the black because I didn't have that. So I just used some um, black from my sewing machine, which is probably a polyester polyfill inside. And anyway, if you wait till the end, you can have a little peek at the pictures that she did which are so cute and I managed to find um, a little box that had been waiting to go in the bin for ages and it was the perfect size so I got rid of the box and I managed to transport the beautiful little doll without crushing her to work so win-win anyway she's gonna be lovely um, I don't have to rush her and I don't have any fabric for her outfit so when at some point I find some I'll just buy it and then I mean, to be honest, the face was the thing that took me the longest time. I don't anticipate the rest taking long at all. So, um, yeah, I think we're, we're doing well. The legs are just long and thin. I've not turned them out yet. And the arms, again, long and thin. Um, and my friend is going to keep hers just in her bedroom. I think she's just going to have, you know, bedside table, lovely little lamp and then a doll, maybe a candle or something. She's um, very good at creating little kind of Instagrammy, Instagrammable setups in her house, which are stunning. Anyway, before I finish, my last sewing project, which I've been working on. 
So I've done a couple of sewing projects recently that seem to have been just going awry. Whether I've picked the wrong fabric or... Um, what have I done recently? Oh, I made a dirndl skirt, so it's just a long rectangle fabric. Side seams are uh, the straight edges, you hem the bottom and then the top part you just gather into the waist and add a waistband. So I did that and I did it out of some um, brown wool and I have actually accidentally made the waistband look a bit too big so unless I was going to stick a jumper, kind of tuck a jumper in, which I won't do, I need to make that smaller so that's annoying. I hate it when you make that kind of silly mistake. That was just a super simple um, skirt. I didn't need a pattern, although there is a pattern um, that I have for it. I don't think I used it. Anyway, um, the fabric that I chose does look a little bit like kind of quite old fashioned, I would say. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's right there. Let me show you just, just to, <laughs> why not? Walking off screen, walking on screen. Oh look, there's the button we were looking for. It's irrelevant now, we have moved on, Christina. So, I made this skirt and I don't live on the little house on the prairie and I'm not, um, you say, an Amish person? If I were an Amish person, um, this would be perfect. For life on the um, the Amish farm. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> this was actually totally the fault of Rachel. Is it Maxi? Rachel Maxi. I'll put her um, Instagram handle below. She has got a beautiful um, YouTube channel where she shows makeup tutorials and she does cosplay and all sorts of stuff and she um she wore something like a little bit similar and it was slightly victorian-y and slightly kind of explorer <laughs> so i thought yeah i'm gonna make that well i'm not sure this was the best choice of fabric though on the screen i'm suddenly thinking oh it looks lovely i don't know i'm gonna make the waistline smaller and then wear it and i could not look at this outfit Look at this outfit! I need to move to the little house on the prairie. Shawl over the shoulders, triangular shawl. Hand knitted, although very beautiful jumper. And then what looks like a kind of hand spun skirt. Anyway, if there is a, a reenactment near my area I of the little house on the prairie, I am set with my outfit. So I'm not sure what I would wear on the top to kind of balance out the slightly frumpy bottom. Maybe something a little bit more streamlined. I have been making, you know, little bits and pieces recently that haven't gone as well as I would have liked. So, I've put in a huge amount of effort with this project. And this is from the book, Breaking the Pattern. Um, it's by the two sisters who have done named patterns. Um, Sarah and Laura. I think that's Hunter. Though the spelling is most unusual. So, it's this gorgeous shirt dress. Though I will not be doing the roughly collar detail because it's in this fabric and I think it would be lost. But I thought that shirt dress with the little collar kind of poking out, how cute would that be? So I have cut this dress out already. I did a twirl, which I would have shown you if my friend had not defaced the calico sample with some very inappropriately rude drawings. I said, can you draw please? Meaning, can you draw the bus point on the pattern? Well, she did not just draw a cross. And I was talking to somebody else and I didn't notice that she had therefore defaced my pattern. And then she drew a hairy chest as well. So it's very silly, <laughs> very silly colour code sample. Anyway, I think this is going to be beautiful. This was from Classic Textiles. It is, I believe, a linen mix. Um, it has a lovely drapiness to it and I thought maybe, actually maybe I do need to line the skirt. We will see about that. I could always make a slip to go with it, although I don't like wearing separate skirts. I will be maybe lining it. Um, 
but I thought that this would be super lovely for transitional times and with a wool pair of tights underneath for the winter and then maybe um I maybe I wouldn't wear it in kind of full summer but kind of spring and then early autumn this is a very autumny kind of fabric so I spent a lot of time on that twirl and it is fitting spot on in the calico I know it can change in the um in the real fabric so oh I feel like I sped through so many things there but I've been working my little fingers to the bone with my projects um, and uh, just at the end there will be a little clip as well and some pictures from the Harrods Ball um, which was lovely and I had such a good time and my team are so so just they, I've never worked with a team of people who are just so splendid so every day we have such a great time and that was a really lovely occasion most of the girls made their dresses so I will put um, couple of pictures in and I did a little bit of footage. The dress was slightly cobbled together at the end but nobody cared and it looked lovely. I'm slightly blue I think in the pictures because the lighting was um, reflecting off some um, silvery balloons but it doesn't matter, it's fine. I didn't go with a crazy ball gown like I have done in the past. I just wore something that I can wear again to other occasions and I'm really very happy with it. I'm going to go in I think and just tweak the seam that I added. I didn't cut the seam away as I said I would. I left it as a dart which meant there was a tiny bit of pulling um, but I can obviously just change that just by snipping in um, to the seam. So yeah stick around for that and other than other than that we are done so thank you so much for watching um i am christina from the gussets and go days podcast and on instagram as well gussets and go days it's been such a pleasure pleasure to share my projects with you and uh, hopefully i will see you soon um with more crafty things so thank you so much and see you.